Welcome to the Pathologic Tier List, the de facto best graded ranking system of the waifu quality found within the 2005 role-playing survival game Pathologic Classic HD by Studio Icepick Lodge. Video brought to you by someone with a few hours of experience in the game. Ah, but I hear you asking, my socially deprived and most likely overweight viewer, but I'm a dating sim slash anime veteran and already have my collection of small, dubiously aged figurines lined up on my shelf in the obvious proper ranking, and I've never even heard of Pathologic. Well, to you, my in no way homogenized or stereotyped trope of a viewer, I would say you're wrong. Pathologic is the best and only dating sim needed to fill the void of your man-child heart. But first, what is Pathologic? Oh, well, I am so glad you asked. It's quite simple, really. Pathologic is a triple linear survival horror, dating sim, political intrigue, murder mystery solving, pandemic fighting, interactive theatrical sandbox, literally, about coping with death, loss, and an acting agency despite the fealty of change, with a slight mix of inner reflection on human desires of media and the potential they can truly unlock. It's really the perfect type of game to round up a wonderfully socially distant harem of top tier waifus. Now, since this game is triplo linear, a totally not made up term for a game having three linear stories, the game obviously has four playable characters who have varying waifu acceptance levels for each of our lucky candidates. So each waifu will receive an alphabetized rating from the Bachelor, House, but Changeling, and the fourth playable character, more on who they are later, then all the scores will be averaged for a total score that will be their final waifu ranking. Oh, and of course, spoiler warning. Okay. So let's start this list off with the nine big political powers that run the town, and which most characters spend most of their playthroughs either placating, fighting, or working for. The Canes are probably the first faction you'll meet and are in charge of the laws of the town. They're also the family with a dead immortal dad who so may have possessed a dream-catching child society-bearing impossible building that they ordered built called the Polyhedron. For the Bachelor, they spend most of their time puppeteering him with lies and tricks so that he can help them obtain power and become the dictators of a new town after artillery bombing the entire city, causing the deaths of tens of thousands of people. Sounds like a pretty abusive waifu relationship to me. Georgie's a grumpy melodramatic boomer waiting to kick the bucket, so he gets D tier. Victor is kind of a nice guy trying to sort of calm down his family and be less murder happy. He's also a vessel to be controlled by his brother Simon Kane, the dead immortal ghost dad whose soul holds the town together. So he gets C tier, I guess. Mary is a manipulative, smooth-talking narcissist, hell-bent on complete dictatorial control with clairvoyant powers to see the bachelor's future and best way to manipulate him. But she's rich and has flower nipples. B tier. The Canes see the Harspex as a bloodthirsty serial killer, accusing him of killing his own father and also being responsible for Simon's death, putting a blood bounty on his head and making the beginning of his playthrough super hard. And for the change thing, they literally think she's a mystical beast of clay and bone that brought the plague and has doomed the entire town. So the Canes get F for those two playthroughs. Total score, Georgia Kane F, Victor Kane F, Maria distractingly flower nippled Kane D. Next in the heads of the three big political families is the Ogimskis, and here is where we get our first glimpse of a truly high tier waifu. So, young Vlad is a sort of waterwell obsessed contrarian, opposing his father with an interest in the folklore and natural mysticism of the land. He's helpful to the player by giving them maps indicating the infected districts, and although he has his secrets, he does genuinely want to help, so he gets a solid B tier. Wait, I'm sorry? What's that? At the end of the game, he makes a total 180 as he falls for Mary's flowery nippled lies, betraying his family to help her gain complete control of the town and bomb his family's historically significant business? Man, that's straight to C tier, my friend. <sighs> Alright. Young Vlad was a bad start, but I promise you, the Okimskis do get better. Big Vlad is a high quality big spoon with too much love to handle on his waist. He's in opposition to the Bachelor, but it's just business. He's never deceitful or outright antagonistic, as he's just trying to do what he thinks is best for his employees in the termitary. B tier. For the Harthbeck, he never bought into the lies that you were a serial killer. He gives you a home, he hugs you, he tells you it'll be okay, and comes up with plans to bring your reputation back up, as halfway through the story he sacrifices himself to some hot BDSM torture from his employees to atone for a sin his son, Young Vlad, committed. You know what, Young Vlad? Go down to D tier. But Big Vlad gets a strong A in the Horus Bucks' playthrough. The Changeling doesn't interact with him much, but he's still his usual lovable, never antagonistic, just trying to do what he thinks is best type of guy. He's a great dad, and an even better daddy. 
he gets a total score of A. Capello Ginsky is a smart, collected, clairvoyant light who takes after her father and is willing to do whatever it takes, even at personal loss. I really like Capella. She's optimistic and trying her best, doing everything she can at the age of 50... Uh, uh, moving on. Okay, let's take a small little break after that uh, uh, hiccup. Why don't we have a rapid-fire intermission before we get to the last big family? Sewing Girl will repair your clothes at an extortionate price so that you can forget to take them off and immediately break them and need to repair them again. She runs away from you at the slightest bad rumor. D tier. Weapon Repair Guy repairs more useful things, but he does try to beat you to death if your reputation is low. C tier. This rich looking asshole does nothing but act snobby and try to kill you when your rep is low because he thinks it will give him a chance to bang flower nipples. F tier. Shop Owner. You can buy everything from him from life saving medicine to delicious egg. And he'll buy anything from you, including live rats and beating hearts. He won't talk with you if your rep is low, though. B tier. So, I'm gonna be honest. When getting footage for this video, I came across this guy. Totally forgot he existed. Only thing worse than a bad waifu is a forgettable waifu. F tier. Guards are just doing their job, so you can't be mad at them for fighting you when your rep is low, but their trading offers are horrible, and they run faster than changeling, so you always die when they aggro! Why, Icepick Lodge? Why did you do this to me? C tier. Fireboys have weird hitboxes, do insane damage, and work for the worst character in the game. F tier. More fireboys have sexy hitboxes, do even more insane damage, and work for one of the best characters in the game. C tier. Carousers are super sexy smiley boys who never attack you regardless of your reputation and trade water that you can literally find in the trash for life-saving healing items. That's an A tier right there. Crooks are pretty easy to fight, give you a hunky loot, can be used to farm innocent lives, don't fight you when your rep is low, and give you rep on killing them. B tier. Thieves are- What the hell? Why do they walk like that? F tier for the love of god, F tier! This has been the Pathologic Rapid Fire Waifu Winter Mission. Now let's get back into the meat of it. The last notable family is the Sabarovs, a family that takes their emergency powers to murder people they don't like, cause mass genocide, deny the plague, blame random people they don't like for the plague, pretend to be clairvoyant when they're actually just drug addicts, take you in as a daughter in your moment of weakness so that they can use their superpowers and then denounce you and throw you aside when your powers no longer work anymore. They do repent at the end and allow themselves to be sacrificed and blood farmed for the good of the town, and I can also kind of get down on that rat whispering morphine life, so I guess they can get a seat here. Alright, now for the other notable characters of the town. Laura Ravel is a kind-hearted woman, running a shelter and putting her life at risk to help as much of the community as possible. She's always kind no matter which character you are, a truly gentle soul, a t and she becomes hysterical, attempting to assassinate a military general. God damn it, Lara! Mental instability is going to dock you some point. I have to give her a tragic B tier. Lulia Lyri... Lyri... Lyrikeva? Lyricheva? Yulia Lilala is a dummy rich, wrinkly brained, thirsty lesbian who was a Machiavellian puppeteer orchestrating many of the political rivalries. That's a solid A tier for all you beta cucks but a B tier for the rest of us. Stanislav Rubin is a great guy, very respectable, and he's willing to put away his pride to work with the changeling and save the entire town. He's also completely insane, body-snatching madman who refuses to work with you, being in hiding for like half the game. C tier. Bad Grief is a lovable little tot that could never pull off being scary. Look at that cute little murderous face. <laughs> that gets an adorable A tier. Peter Stamadin is an unparalleled genius, a prodigy architect that constructed the polyhedron and challenged the rule of God. Dude's also totally down to get wasted and rock an orgy. A tier side hoe, but a little melodramatic and depressing for main waifu material. Bring him down to a C tier. Andre Stamadin is a dude with a serious brother complex. The same alcoholic, but without the fun. D tier. Foreman Oyon is a burly psychopathic minotaur wannabe that literally started the plague and spends most of the game drugging you or trying to kill you. Sometimes literally killing you. Not cool, man. Not cool, man. F tier. Grace is an emo Luna Lovegood wannabe necrophiliac. She's pretty chill, though. C tier. Mark Immortal is just really dedicated to his theater. Really inspiring stuff. B tier. 
The Rat Prophet is a whimsical pathological liar unable to lie that whispers into the ears of drug addicts at night to make them think they're clairvoyant. He's a pompous a-hole who might be your brother depending on the playthrough. C tier. Anna Angel is an absolutely mad Cretan who worked with child traffickers and murdered kids to steal their voices. Kind of hot though. B tier. Aspidy is an ancient being of clay, born from the first plague, a fourth wall breaking entity with a mega crush on the Harspex, and a bit of a pranking streak against those she disagrees with. She helps those in need and does what she can to be a part of and help the town despite knowing of its true nature. A tier. Butchers are big, scary employees of the Ogimskis, really mean tempered guys. They're the type of person that squeezes their hand as hard as possible when you handshake, and that's just not right. F tier. Worms are cute, happy herbalists that will trade organs for drugs. B tier. Herb brides are magical women that can grow plants with this badass dance move. It's the only one they know, so you better like it. A tier. Boss Turok is an actual god cow that eats evil and birthed the universe. There's a whole lot of her to go around. A tier. The albino is just a chill dude that wants to help out. You have to kiss with your eyes closed though, since looking at it will cause your insights to boil you to death. B tier. The Hunchback is an evil leader of that child trafficking group Anna was a part of. He's a terrible father, and orchestrated the riots with the Fireboys, one of the worst mobs in the game. His side story is definitely one of the darkest hour moments of the game. Dude gets a deep, deep F tier, hands down worst character in the game. The plague is a giant bloody angel slash cloud of skulls thing that is highly infectious and makes it die in a slow hubble way, making your screen all shaky and giving you the bad feels. That's the definition of a toxic relationship. F tier. Alexander Block is a military commander that is willing to take the changeling in when the Sabarash threw her aside. A great dad with a little bit of a power fantasy. He's also in charge of the biggest artillery in the country, but obediently only uses it how you want. Now that is quality listening to your spouse. A tier. Aglaia Lilich is a murder-happy inquisitor holding mad beef against the canes and doesn't even want to save the town. She's really close-minded and can order you shot at any second. C tier. The powers that be are gods as omnipotent as they are incompetent. You could say they have the foresight and consistency of children playing in a sandbox. F tier. The developers of the game are omnipresent beings that created one of the greatest, most profound games of all time. Also, just look at that ass. A plus double S tier. Now, for the four playable characters. Since this game has multiple playthroughs, you get to meet the playable characters as just normal NPCs, depending on who you're playing as. So, they're in this list too. The Bachelor is a bumbling idiot trying to uncover the secrets of immortality. He's constantly accidentally screwing everything up by not understanding the culture nor being willing to learn. And he's a complete sandeje to boot. C tier. The Horrorspex is a get down and dirty insider to the town's culture. If you had to pick a single main character, it would be him. And he also creates Panacea, the cure to the plague. And he's willing to do things himself if need be. A tier. The Changeling is a miracle worker who heals the sick and can uncover any truth. She is the embodiment of the opposition of the plague and the key to all that is good. S tier. The Changeling is a thief and a killer, able to make anyone sick and cover the truth. She is the embodiment of the plague and the key to all that is bad. F tier. The Changeling is a thief able to steal her own fate and enact agency within the entrapment of a video game. She is the sole character able to choose what she is, as either a healer or a killer. She is unable to lie, for all her lies become reality. A tier. The final playable character in Pathologic. The final potential waifu. The character that has been pulling all the strings, the true changeling, the true decider of fate, is you, the player. A wonderful viewer who somehow stuck with this video all the way to the end and also liked and subscribed. You will always be an S tier in my heart. You may have noticed that I skipped a waifu. A waifu who to the bachelor is an unmatched goddess. A waifu 
so astounding she had to get her own intro theme. The ultimate pathological waifu is... Evayan is a beautiful angel who gives her health to you and unquestioning compassion, always supporting you through thick and thin to the point of yeeting herself off a cathedral to merge her soul with it in an attempt to help you succeed. That's dedication. That's S tier. Sadly, she buys into rumors and is pretty hostile towards the other characters, so her final score goes down to A tier. from ourselves than we do from others.